welcome to uh, a little bit something different. <laughs> I thought today, you know, I do see a lot of people that uh, tend to play video games that they used to enjoy as a child and just, you know, various different things. So I thought, you know what, I'd like to make a couple videos maybe of some of the games I used to enjoy when I was a kid. And uh, this one actually just happens to be one of them. And I really think this game gets a bad rap because everybody says, oh, this is the game that made, you know, the decline of the video game era and the consoles and et cetera back in 1984 and blah, blah, blah. This game wasn't that bad. And before everybody says, but wait, yes, it was. You have to keep in mind one thing that they really don't publish when they're showing this and they're showing people playing it. This is off of the Atari 2600. And you would think that kids, you know, especially, <laughs> you know, kids that are playing video games, uh, wouldn't put up with a game that was just crap. Well, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that most games are just crap. <laughs> no, just kidding. But, uh, you know, I mean, these were, these were cool at the time. These were things that we wanted to play. And they also had level select, or not level select, but what they call game select, which you could turn the game on different modes. And one particular mode that they used to have, which it got kind of nicknamed teddy bear mode because of centipede, uh, basically you could turn it on to like it was a kid mode. Uh, it had, And on centipede it had a little teddy bear at the bottom of it. That means you're on easy, basically. And so that would be better for children because the... Uh, the spiders that are on centipede, they go through you and they don't actually cause you to hit them. But everything else still works. Well, the same can be said for almost every single Atari game. It does have what, you know, what I affectionately call the teddy bear mode. So on E.T. here, uh, on teddy bear mode, I'm going to run through it here real quick. I still remember how to play this game. I spent hours playing this probably when I was... Seven, six, five, from five to seven, anywhere in there. This was this was neat to play. You just had to kind of learn the rules. Now, like I said, usually when you see this on somebody, they're like, oh, you know, kids try this and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, my God, this game sucks. And, you know, and, and I mean, the graphics aren't great. But then again, I didn't think Minecraft had all that great graphics because it's still blocky as heck. But, uh, you know. Now, one thing you will notice, the, the little symbol up top is actually what you're looking for. Because no matter what screen you're on, like this one is the forest, you can see the trees, etc. You're going to find these symbols. And these symbols, if you use your power, which, again, keep in mind, when you're playing this, you had a joystick and a button. So you've got up, down, left, and right, and then whatever the button's going to do. So in this particular one, the button raises E.T.'s head up and down, and then it will use whatever power. These, these symbols are actually powers. So, like, if I wanted to teleport to the screen to the right, I'd use the right arrow. If I wanted to go up, I'd teleport that. But you can also just walk there and do it as well. These, in this teddy bear mode, don't really come in handy right now. If I was in full mode with the FBI agents and the scientists tracking me down, this is a great way to get rid of them, or at least get away from them. Now, this symbol up here, this will make them go back to their base, back to town, basically. But they don't stay there for long. They will come back out and they try to find you. Now, this game is basic, is loosely based on the movie. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the pieces to build E.T.'s communicator device so that he can contact his ship and go home. And, of course, this gets, gets monotonous after a while. But I don't know. See, you can hold down the button when you're walking, and you can run. And it seems to be a little bit faster. Now, that, that question mark, if there was any pieces here, it would have lit up. And that is very annoying to listen to in my ears. But we shall carry on, because, like I said, I used to play this for hours. Sometimes I'd even just put it in, just to, you know... I mean, we didn't, we didn't have, like, speed runs back in the day, but, you know, that's something we would actually do. We would put it in and see, okay, well, how fast can I beat this? I never really timed myself. It was like, well, I felt, felt faster than last time. But, 
Keep in mind, I was like five or seven, so. None here either. Okay, so little dots that you're picking up are supposed to be Reese's pieces. Just hit a pit. Now all the pieces that you're looking for are going to be in, in these little black areas, which are pits. Now there's one. And basically what you're trying to do is there are three pieces to the phone. The interstellar phone to call home there. Just got to be careful because you, you sometimes can't get stuck in these pits where it's like when you get up, you take one step and then the game immediately kicks you back into it. Just a drawback of the of the game itself, of the programming, uh, what do you want to call it, the hit, it's not really a hit box, but, you know, it's <laughs> it's like where, where it registers that you are actually standing on a pit square instead of uh, just on the regular square that you need to be on. You can eat, at that square means you can eat Reese's Pieces and you will gain energy. But you do have to kind of watch it because if you run through these enough, you will run out of Reese's Pieces. And if you run out of energy, you're pretty much dead. Now, Elliot, he will come and find you, and he will come give you energy, but I can't remember how many times he does that. I think it's only like a one-time one time deal that he'll do that, and then you're on your own. All right, there's one. Okay. Now, things you need to watch out for while you're doing this, and obviously in other modes it gets a lot harder, um, but there is one particular symbol, that's the call Elliot button, it's an E, like, shouting. I, <laughs> I could be a face shouting, but at least like an E. Uh, but there, there's a symbol that kind of looks like a frog. And, yes, I'm doing that on purpose because, again, I was five or seven when I, last time, I, well, probably not the last time I played this, but when I really sat down and played and enjoyed this game, um... Okay, so we did this one, but I didn't see any... Whoop. Don't fall in the pit. I don't see anything flashing. Okay. But you want to kind of keep an eye out for this symbol. It looks like a frog. It's supposed to look like... It's supposed to look like the ship, but it looks like a frog. <laughs> it really does. I mean, you, you look at it and you're like, yeah, I could get a spaceship out of that, but... Uh, it's a frog. Careful not to go in the pits. And of course, my memory is terrible, so I can't even remember which screens I've checked and which screens I haven't. Nothing there. Okay. Well, this is kind of a predicament. Okay. Yeah, that was the worst screen right there, because you inevitably wind up coming across either right there or at the bottom. And... Uh, you wind up getting right in the pit. Yep. Now, obviously, if you get up too, if you get up too high, you go straight to the forest, which is a pain in the butt. There we are. Okay. We've got all the pieces of the phone. We can now phone home. There it is. It looks more like a frog than anything, but... Okay, you use that, and then what you want to do is you want to head up any any screen except for town. If you go up, it's the forest. You don't want to get caught in a pit. <laughs> okay, so now what you're doing... Oh, right there, that's the symbol you're looking for. Anywhere in here, you're good. That's the landing pad. So yeah, like I said, we used, you know we'd spend hours doing this on the teddy bear mode it was just it was aggravating as a child to play the game on any other mode because the scientists and the fbi agents are just unrelenting now also something as a kid we didn't usually do to us that we've just beaten the game but if you sit here long enough it'll restart on level two or whatever on this particular mode there's really no difference other than the pieces are hidden all over the place but, uh, but, you know, that's that. Like I said, we would sit here sometimes and just replay this and replay this. And, I mean, we had a lot of fun with it at the time. It's not this great catastrophic, oh, my God, this is a waste of money, blah, blah, blah. 
like I said, I think the games, they were what they were. Um, I personally, we owned this. My my parents, my dad especially, he loved to sit down and play the Atari. I loved to sit down and play the Atari. It's probably one of the reasons why I'm a gamer. Uh, you know, just having that box with all those titles, and you wouldn't think there were many, but oh, man, we had a like a TV cart, and the bottom of it had this drawer, and that sucker was full. And those cartridges were only like maybe, what, an inch and a half, two inches wide by four, four, six inches across. You stack up a bunch of those, it looks like you made a little, you know, brick wall out of these cartridges, and they all had labels, and it looked pretty cool. But uh, I'm going to see if I can find some more of these. This is an emulation site. This site works very well. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. I love it. It gives me some old nostalgia that I can look at. Some of you people can say, hey, let's go try this out. It does give a little picture of the Atari at the bottom. And you can see the, like, the game select switch or the game reset, etc. Even the little difficulty adjusters that you can put on it. Some games took full advantage of those. Other ones didn't. But uh, yeah, this one I don't think it actually did. Uh, usually on the difficulty, like if you were playing Kaboom or something with you know that you had to like break out you uh the difficulty would show you the size of your paddles so the little you know the little board paddle bucket whatever you want to call it uh depending on the game you were playing uh it would either be really wide or really narrow and then you'd have to bounce the ball or catch the bombs or whatever you were doing in it but anyway uh, like i said i think this game does get a, a pretty bad rap for you know being the, the end all of consoles and downfall of the Atari 2600, it really was more of like a bad business decision of how many copies to make than it was just a specifically really bad game. But like I said, you know, there are some spots in it where you can get trapped in a pit. It is kind of frustrating and annoying. Uh, the mothership, sometimes you miss it. You just got to go back to the little frog, you know, the little ship, call it back down and try again. You know, you can usually do that about two or three times before it decides, nope, you can't do it again. But anyway, that is the game, and uh, I do thank you guys for sitting through that and listening to me ramble a little bit. Um, be sure to like and subscribe if you like the video, and I hope you guys have a good day.